So uh, welcome, Laurie. It's good to see you. Hey, Janice. It's good to see you too. Looking now, good with the blue. I, I know. I, I know. You know, it's only glass people with glasses allowed on this this session. So yeah, we're rocking it. We are definitely it. rocking it. Yeah. <laughs> So everyone that's uh, either listening to the, the recording or if you're on live, there are comments. Please do comment anything that you hear, any stories that you would like to offer. We'd love to hear from you. If you're listening to this on the recording, please make sure that you connect with myself and Laurie Richardson and uh, make sure you have a look at our, our bios on, on LinkedIn. If you do have any questions after this session, because it is a very quick, you know, 25, 30 minutes, please do continue to the conversation and post them to either myself or, or Laurie. Now, we've done quite a few of these and we decided we're going to have some fun on this one. We're really just going to go with where the wind takes us. So, uh, Laurie, um, what we are talking about are the, the three critical strategies that sales leaders, what they need to do now. So um, what would be your three critical uh, pillars or strategies that you think sales leaders need to be doing now? Yeah, it's a great question. I hear and see a lot of people in companies who are struggling. Okay. It's been a weird year. I, I, I don't know anyone who disagrees with that. If you do, good for you. You know, if you're not having a weird year, that's great. A lot of us are having a weird year. Um, I talked to someone this week who said, you know, my pipeline is full, but nothing's closing. So the things that I think about, I go back to the fundamentals, um, which are always the, the pillars for me in, in times that are good or times that are tougher. Um, the first, the most primary thing for me is mindset. And I'd love to expand on that a little more later. Um, the second thing is about, um, you know, having a process and working a consistent process, uh, no matter what, if you know it works, work it, but also do a little brainstorming on the side. The third one is brainstorm to make sure that, you know, things haven't changed so much that your process isn't working. And, and this is where the, you know, the art part of, of the, we do a lot with science in the sales, <laughs> you and I, but this is where the art is, you know, what I'm going to bounce some ideas off of some people in my company, outside of my company and see what they're doing. And, and it's it's a game changer for me to watch people who are newer in sales, who are really, I always try to find the most successful people. And I've always learned since I was in my 20s, you know, that success leaves clues. So look for what successful people are doing. And if, if the timing is different now, what are they doing now that's different that can help you? And, and then try those and, and A, B test things. Love that. Love that. Um, when you were talking, I was thinking of Scale Yourselves podcast. I get the the privilege of, of interviewing experts and leaders like yourself. And literally every time um, I hear something, I'm thinking of somebody that said something similar or, or what they're doing with their um, sales team. Um, you, your success certainly leaves clues, and that's why it's such an honor to to speak to people that are very busy, um, but actually they're the ones that are um, always always willing to share the strategies that are working for them in in their company. Yeah, and such simple things like mindset. When people think, "Oh, sure, you know, mindset's important," I mean, in tougher times, it's fundamentally important every day you're not thinking oh you know it's going to be like yesterday or this is a tough week it's a tough month this is happening this month that's why i think you know those are all limiting beliefs that a lot of us don't even think about that they just go on in our heads and you've got to catch them and and you've got to acknowledge that you have it you, you don't want to get rid of them because they're, i think it's maybe impossible to get rid of limiting beliefs but instead, I like to acknowledge them and smile and go, ah, I see what you're doing there, you know, little brain. 
Um, but I'm not going to go that way today. I'm going to take that and that limiting belief and I'm going to turn it into, you know, well, well, what's wrong with this month or what? So what if people are on vacation or holidays? You know, it's OK, because there are people that are working right now that need our help. So it's a matter of really tuning into that. And I'm telling you, that'll limit that will solve so many fundamental problems with the team with leadership it, it it's it's so important to do just like just like athletes i think that's a really interesting point because you know you so you talked about mindset and then a consistent process and, and brainstorming but actually you almost need a process for the mindset to actually stay on top of the mindset, because, you know, we have the monkey on our back, the negative self-talk, and it's going on all the time. And I really like your strategy of actually just acknowledging it, you know, not blocking it out, but saying, oh, I see what you're doing here. I think that's a really great strategy, almost naming it. Oh, so you've come back to visit me and, you know, kind of laughing at it, really. Um, that may be your, your, you know, strategy, but it'd be lovely to hear other people's. What is, how do they keep themselves, their mindset in check? Um, and you, their limiting beliefs. How how do they make sure that that is is not um, undermining their their aspirations and their activities? Yeah, yeah. Like, and for me, it's every morning. You know, I think about that before I sit down. Um, be, what I'm doing, my preparation for getting to the office. I, I think about some great things that will happen today because you don't know if they will or not, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. like, it, it, it doesn't hurt me any to say this might be the day that that big deal closes, or this might be the day because I still close deals. I know you do too, Jess. We, we're not uh, these, you know, high on the mountaintop uh, people who just tell people what to do. Like we do that, this. That would well. be my story, wouldn't it? That would be lovely. Yeah. But it's Maybe one day. <laughs> Maybe one day. One day we'll grow up and be like that. <laughs> yeah. But every day, you know, I'm 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 reaching out and talking to people. That's another part of my my process is that I want to talk to at least three people every every day. Yeah. And, and so if I do that, and, and you know, it's so easy to get bogged down. Oh, I got a project and we're going on this big thing. Make some phone calls, um, pick up the phone or do a LinkedIn message or, you know, WhatsApp or connect with someone in another way. And um, you'll be surprised at how many, how many good things can happen from that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I have a morning process which starts with um, a meditation um, practice. Every time I miss it, my day just doesn't go to plan. And it's almost like thinking about bringing your day into existence that you decide this is what it's going to be. You know, today is going to be the day where, you know, a big deal lands in my, my lap. But if you do not think that way, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so you have to, you know, put it out there in uh, the universe and uh, in order for it to manifest it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's important that sales leaders recognize that they're human too. And that if their if their mindset is right, then the mindset of the team is is right. So they actually have to work a lot on themselves. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's what development's all about. Someone said, someone was telling me, you know, that's why doctors call what they do a practice. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Even doctors don't have all the answers. We, I think we all know that the older we get, the older, the, the, the more we know that we're aware of that. Um, but we're all working at this. We don't have uh, all of the answers to what makes everything happen. We have to try different things and, and then keep at it and try them again and try them again and, and not give up and say, well, if Janice wanted to talk to me, you know, she, she'd return my email. That's, mm. You know, that's just not true. Yeah. Janice is busy. Uh, Janice may have seen it. I, I was telling you that I, I'm switching to a new email process and I'm just making sure that I know where all my emails are, <laughs> let alone, you know, I, I could, it could be a, a technical situation. Luckily it's not, it's a really good system, but I just had to, I'm having to relearn where things are. So 
um, you can't just assume. Don't assume until so until Janice tells me. You know what, Lori? I thought about it. And we decided not to go forward with this, and here's why. And she has a valid reason. Now I'm good, but until I get to that point, it's upon me to keep following up with Janice in some manner. It doesn't mean I'm going to harass her or hassle her all the time, but I will check back with her. I'll comment on her social media. Someone did that to me this week that I owed a response to, and I was like, mm, I know yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> Just like my little voice, <laughs> I know what you're doing. But, but it works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it it and, and it's true it's thinking sometimes uh, well sales uh it's known that sales reps give up too too early way too early and we have to follow up uh they often follow up once or twice and that's it they drop it but actually it's on the 10th time it's never on the first well, rarely on the first it's yeah. so you have to keep going and i can understand the mindset i don't want to harass this person and all of that but actually you're never at other people's priorities you're never anyone else's priority so just those reminders the time may be not right now but it will be right at some point and that's why it now takes 10 followers up but you don't do it you know 10 emails going out on the you know you've got to be forward 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 <laughs> exactly my email. Right. I don't know if you saw this <laughs> a little bit more creative than that and as laurie as you've just said you know comment on their their social media as a reminder to that email and you don't need to mention the email but it's going to make that that link um, so you've got to be clever, but you have to have to follow up a good 10, 20 times for you to become their priority. Yeah, I, I'm an advisor now for a company called Fixer.ai, uh, and I posted a note yesterday on LinkedIn, which goes to all of your connections when you have a new job. Of course, some people think it's a brand new full time job for me, but, um, I, you know, it. I knew that it would reach a lot of people. And I'm still going to post a message about it, but it it was, you know, it, it's just a good thing to do when you're in that position, when you when you have something to share with people or, or a newsletter, like newsletters go to everybody in LinkedIn the, in, that you're connected to the first time mm -hmm. you put a new a LinkedIn newsletter out. So there there's some really fundamental things that you can do to get out there. It's not just, oh, I sent a direct message. I didn't hear back. I mean, then try something else. Send a letter. I, I posted also this week about mailing letters, you know, cards, snail mail, as we call it. Um, and and it, you can actually send them, you can send digital cards as well. And you can have services do it on your behalf. So you're not, you don't even have to sign and you can still send a very caring message. Um, I heard one of the best things yesterday, Janice, um, from a guy named Jesse Itzler. He happens to be, he's the husband of Sarah Blakely from Spanx. Yeah. Um, but Jesse in, in his own right is hugely successful. He um, had a, a fractional private jet company and sold it. Um, and, and, you know, he's done some very, very big things. And he gave five points for, you know, things that he wished he knew when he was younger. And, you know, one of them was in, in reaching out to people, reach out on somebody's birthday, which is great. But also if you know that their, their father passed away a year ago and they posted about it and it was very hard on them, yeah, people will send a condolence card. And he was saying, you know, the thousands of people I'm connected to, one person, sent me a card on my dad on the anniversary of my dad's uh, passing two years prior and he said you think i know who that guy is <laughs> like you know it was very touching and yeah. so there's a lot of things you can do that don't take money but they take thought thought and and a process like we were talking about absolutely absolutely all right well i'm going to present what i uh, i think uh three critical strategies for sales leaders that they, they need to do now and see what you think um, to these, Laurie. Okay. So first is deal management and then coaching to optimize your, your sales team and then implementing a customer-centric buying operation. So 
deal management uh, on uh, you know like you have an aha moment so on my scale yourselves at podcast um, mick gossett who's the ceo of joint flow came on and he talked about today now sales leaders it's all about deal management eight it's he said it's 80 percent deal management and only 20 percent sales process sales methodology whichever mm -hmm. you use and that was an aha it really made me think and it's almost like lots of people are kind of talking about it but he put a stake in the sand between the 80 20 and then that's kind of like in the conversation there's there's lots of aspects that came through in terms of how he implements that as a sales leader in his team and how he enables his team around that and the successes that he's had from that and then afterwards i found a, a mckinsey um research and according to their study that if you optimize deal a deal management process you're 25 percent more likely to increase revenue so there was the stats to kind of back it up so that's re the reason why this is the kind of the top of my tree in terms of what sales leaders need to be doing now but it has an operational aspect um to it once you decide that it's around 80 percent, you're focusing on deal management you need to think about you know who are the customers that you're going to spend that time with in order to enable them to manage the deal through their processes and how your processes need to change that and the kind of people you have on your team that's capable and able to do that. So the second one, coaching. Wow. Uh, coaching and optimizing your, your sales team. You've got to have the right people in the right seats to do the right job in order to manage those deals going through. But also in managing the deals, it's a longer sales cycle, but you've got to have the coaching support along with that. And so that's why it's it. this is my, my number two. And you and I know all too well, um, Laurie, uh, how important coaching is from the process that we we both use and the research that's come out of, of that. Yeah. But to back that up, um, uh, CSO's insights found that companies that have a strong sell, uh, coaching culture are 17% higher win rates. So the stats to back that up, but also on my um, the live session I did with Andy, He's, you know, a top sales leader and uh, coaching. Coaching is his go to and his everything. And we talked a lot about that in our previous live session. So coaching in order to make your or bring your B players up to A players. It's got to be around coaching rather than training, coaching, coaching, coaching. So I know you've got a lot to say about coaching, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. I mean, the one thing I think about coaching is that it can be bite size. It can be simple, quick. Um, that can be the best way for us to to retain it and then get it reinforced over the, you know, one of the biggest problems, Janice, is that someone will tell you something and they'll be like, well, I told her, I told her what to do, but you didn't remind me. You didn't uh, send it to me in a graphic so I could see it because I'm a visual learner. Um, that happens. It, it it happens all the time where people say, well, I, I told them that and they didn't do it. Well, that's because we don't learn that way. We learn through repetition, reinforcement and bite sized chunks, coaching where there's a lesson and, you know, where you can explain something instead of me just saying, well, where are you at? What are your numbers, Janice? You know, what are you going to close at? Because I'd like to kind of figure it out for myself. You know, it, it's very self-motivated. But if you can say, you know, Tell me about a call that you made last week and, and how did it go and what would you have done differently? You know, maybe it didn't go so well. What could, what could you have done differently if you had to do it over again? And maybe you can do it over again because sometimes you can reach back out to people when you don't have a great conversation and just say, you know, I was a little off yesterday. I, I totally forgot to mention this to you. I've done this a hundred times and people are very receptive. Um, we're, we're much harder in our in our minds about like, oh, I blew it. You know, I didn't say the most important thing. It's like you can follow up. Say, yeah. you know, yes, I forgot to mention the, this one thing. Can I check back with you? Or could we have a quick call on it? 
I, I think I think that's great. It's taking your ego out of it. That's why you're not calling them back. Yeah. You know what uh, what they think of me, and it's nothing. It's not to nothing to do with you. It's all to do with yeah. them. Can yeah. you offer them something that is going to enable them to get to where they want to be anyway? And coaching changes behaviors. Training does not train unless you're doing role playing, or it doesn't change behaviors, and that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, and it. I mean, we're so hard on ourselves. <laughs> it's like, just get out of your head, you know, and just try it. Yeah. Just give it a try. Just humor me. When I when I was young, I worked for my grandmother in her clothing store, and a woman would see a, an outfit that my grandma had for sale, and it would she, she would think that it's too. Um, she she thinks the size is too big. It's a twelve instead of a ten. I'm a ten. My grandma would say honey, just try it on. Just try it on, you know, and just see, to see what it is. We, we're so set on black and white and right and wrong. And, yeah. you know, there's no gray and, and there is a lot of gray. And, it's all gray. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, gray. it's all about whose perspective you're taking, you know? And and so my third one is about the perspective of the, of the buyer. That's the perspective we ought to be taking in the way that we organize a sales operation. It's not based upon our sales, it's based upon the buyer's buying and how they want to purchase, what is their journey. And so the state of sales, uh, this is Salesforce state of sales report, said that 76% of customers expect companies to understand their needs and expectations. It's all about the customer, it's not to do with us. And so what we need to do and what sales leaders need to do is align their operations around the customer's journey and focus on understanding the buyer's needs and the benefits to this in terms of getting better, creating better feedback loops in le leveraging predictive analytics and enabling you to streamline your process, cut out the waste if it's not important, if it's not going to um, focus on that customer's pain point and priorities. If it's not going to understand what their priorities are and understand their language, then all of these are just blocks in the system and we need to start re removing that and in increasing customer satisfaction, understanding what would satisfy them. And all of this will lead to at least a 20% growth rate in repeat business. And that's the easy pickings, really, the customers you've already got. Yeah, and I think one of the easiest things people can start with is to really value other people's time. And and instead of me having a 10-minute talk or presentation, uh, maybe they only have five minutes. You know, I, I need yeah. to check with them first and understand what's happening and, and what they need help with and see how I can be of help to them and of service to them. I'm I'm here to be of service. And that's what true sellers are. We're, you know, we're lifelong learners and we are helpers. And so that if you have that mindset, then you can add great value to people that are in need of solutions and, and need of change. Love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. So what would you you uh, say to a sales leader who said, you know, like I do, I've done that, you know, <laughs> <We've Doesn't> all... <laughs> yeah. I've done right. that, I, you know, like we meet them all the time, don't we? That you know, yeah. like they, they do things in the way that they've always do it, uh, done it, and they will defend the way that they've always always done them. So it speaks to your mindset. It speaks yeah. to process, and you know, not really brainstorming outside of what what they all yeah. already know and really focus on what they know, which is the sales process rather than what I'm talking about, which is the buyer's journey and understanding the buyers more. So what would you yeah. say to a sales leader that came out with that kind of statement? Well, when someone is really defensive, um, I, I, I'll just ask them, you know, are you here to defend what you're doing or are you looking for change? Now, a lot of times where that happens for me is at a, a VP level or, um, you know, head of sales because they are, after all, over responsible for the, the sales effort. And so I may be a threat to them. 
I, I'm better off talking to C-level, um, talking to company founder, or if it's a bigger company, you know, the head of the region or something, because um, often, not always, but sometimes the, the leader is part of the problem. And anyone who's an individual contributor who has a leader that doesn't support them knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, they, I had 23 managers in my career and some were awesome, some were awful. Um, so we got to look at everything. We have to look at, and, and often if that's the case, that the leader, whoever's running sales, if, if that's part of the challenge, then you know, we need to tackle that head on. And we, and you and I do that by, you know, doing a survey of the whole team and getting feedback from the team about how they coach and what they're being coached on and all those kinds of things. So that's one way we have a, we have a process, you and I, to, yeah. to solve that, which I think is really great. Yeah. And, you know, some people are just not ready for it. And um, uh, yeah. we were on a call with a, a sales leader that said, well, I hire five with the expectation that, you know, I'll get rid of four. And we were just always, oh, are we still doing this? Really? You know, like, and, like, that that yeah. I mean, and not just from a money standpoint, right? But yeah. just morale. Like if you keep seeing all these people being churned, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to work there. No, no. So, uh, yeah, well, we're happy to go back in a year's time where they've wasted all of this money and say, OK, now do you want to do the process? <laughs> or that leader's gone unless they're founder or owner or something. But, yeah, yeah. We, we outlive a lot of those people. Yeah, yeah, we do. And, you know, that unfortunately, there are a lot in, in sales. But I speak to so many incredible CROs, sales leaders that have in amazing strategies, a great work ethic, a really tight team that are coaching people through the uh, deals. And, you know, sometimes I come off the podcast and I think, I want to work for them. You know, they're just delightful and supportive. And we can talk about mental health in sales, which is a, previously was a real taboo. And they have an, an extremely positive mindset. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because certainly is the case. We have, I've run into such amazing leaders in my lifetime as well. And some that I'm going to be talking with in the coming months as well. So very yeah. excited about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope everyone's, uh, uh, it's food for thought. Um, are you in the right team? You know, the sales leaders, uh, have you got the right mindset, the consistent process? Are you actually brainstorming and looking for new ways of, of doing things, even looking for new ways of doing things within your team? Are you managing the, the deal? Um, and focusing on that expert deal management and how does that is that affecting your 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 team and your operation? Are you coaching? Do you need those skills? Do you have the data within uh, your organization? Oh, S Stella, Stella has just come on. It's absolutely fantastic. Mental health. She's talking about mental health in sales is so important. Absolutely agree with you. Thank you so much for that, um, Stella. Uh, yeah. So coaching and also uh, so, um, a customer-centric uh, buying culture. Yes, mental health is really important. And if your sales leader is not dealing with it in a positive way, you really need to think about the culture um, of the organizations because it's so critically important um, talking about that. Um, so yes, thank you for that, um, Stella Rand. Hello, and thank you for joining us. So in our next session um, with Andy Champion, that's on the, the 10th. Here is the link. Please make sure that you register and join us. And as I say, please do co connect with myself and uh, Laurie. And this is our, our next session. Connect with myself uh, Laurie Richardson and Janice uh, B. Gordon on LinkedIn to continue the conversation. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you so much, Laurie. Um, as always, you're a mind of thought leadership and insight. I really enjoy our session. So thank you very much. I love speaking with you. Thanks, Janice.
All right.